那我们就开始吧。OK。Hey, good morning, everyone. Good night. Hmm. Professor Liu. Hey, welcome to our analysis seminar. Today, Professor Shi Bo Liu, Xiamen, uh, University. He will talk us locking leaky and identified shorting equations. Professor Liu. Uh, okay. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, to have this uh, opportunity to uh, present this talk here. Uh, I am very grateful to Professor Zhou for his invitation and his arrangement. Uh, and uh, uh, I am very happy to uh, meet everyone here. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, well, uh, I will talk about local linking and uh, uh, some uh, existence result for uh, indefinite Schrodinger type equations. Um, uh, so, um, so this is the contents of my talk. Uh, there are five sections. Uh, uh, the second section is about uh, uh, semi-linear Schrodinger equation. And uh, the third and the fourth are about uh, Schrodinger Poisson systems. Finally, in the last section, I will talk about uh, quasi-linear Schrodinger equations. Uh, in all these results, the Schrodinger operator uh, 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 is indefinite. Okay. So the first section is some uh, basic idea of about variational methods. Uh, so suppose omega is a bounded domain uh, in Rn, and we consider this a uh, Dirichlet problem. Uh, we define this functional f over the Sobolev space h0, h0 1. Uh, here, capital G, capital G is the primitive of the uh, nonlinearity, the small g. Then, uh, if u is a critical point of f, then by the left computation, for every testing function uh, phi, uh, we see that the derivative of f at u as a linear uh, continuous functional over h0 1 acting on phi. Uh, that is this derivative, uh, which is the difference of these two integrals. So we see that u is a weak solution or generalized solution of our boundary value problem. Uh, so uh, if if the nonlinearity g is smooth enough, uh, then uh, by elliptic regularity, we know that these weak solutions uh, are in fact uh, classical solutions. Uh, so uh, if so, the, the problem of solving this uh, uh, boundary value problem is equivalent to finding critical point of uh, the functional f defined here. Uh, well, uh, the, the branch of mathematics about uh, the existence of a critical point and uh, the estimate estimation of its num numbers are called critical is called critical point theory. Uh, Critical point theory, uh, in addition to the classical extreme value pro uh, theory, uh, which uh, concerns about the minimizer and the maximizer of a given functional, uh, there are two uh, other important theory. Uh, uh, the first is the minimax theory, uh, which includes uh, mountain pass theorems, saddle point theorems, and uh, all kinds of linking theorems. Uh, the other branch of a great critical point theory is the Morse theory. Uh, the uh, basic con uh, concept of Morse theory uh, it are critical groups and uh, Morse inequalities. Uh, critical groups describe the local behavior of the functional uh, near an um, isolated critical point. While Morse inequality described uh, local uh, behavior and uh, the global behavior of the functional. Uh, but we will not uh, uh, use uh, Morse inequality in this talk. Uh, we will encounter critical group later. Okay. Now this is the basic idea of variational methods, and uh, now uh, we go to our uh, uh, object of study, the nonlinear Schrodinger equations. Uh, so this is a uh, time-dependent Schrodinger equations. Uh, a an important class of solutions for this time-dependent equation is the so-called standing waves, uh, which are solutions of this form. So it is easy to see that. Uh, to find standing waves uh, it, uh, is equivalent to find a uh, solution u of this uh, uh, equation. Uh, this is an elliptic equation over the uh, Euclidean space Rn. Uh, so this is an elliptic equation, uh, uh, the, uh, sometimes called uh, stationary Schrodinger equations. Okay, 
And uh, similarly, uh, in other similar problem, uh, we will encounter uh, this systems of uh, equation, nonlinear equation, uh, and also uh, this equations of this form. Uh, okay, so these two problems, uh, the the, the system three are called Schrodinger uh, Poisson systems. Well, the equation four uh, is called uh, uh, quadrilinear Schrodinger equation because this term here, this term here makes uh, the equation uh, quadrilinear. In all these three problem, there is a um, capital V here, which uh, is called a potential function. This potential, the relation, uh, uh, the relation between this potential V and the, the original potential U in the time dependent problem are given by this equality. Okay, so we see that even if the capital U is positive, if we want to find the standing waves which are large omega, uh, then our V will be negative somewhere so that the Schrodinger operator might be uh, indefinite. Okay, so the study of uh, this three uh, kind of problem in the uh, last decades, uh, most study uh, concerns the case that V is positive. When V is positive, this quadratic form uh, is positive definite. So if the nonlinearity, the nonlinearity G uh, is uh, superlinear near zero, then when capital B, the quadratic form is positive definite, uh, uh, the zero function will be a local minimizer of the corresponding variational function of capital V, uh, so that we can apply the mountain path theorem uh, to get a critical point of V, therefore a solutions of our uh, equations or systems. But as I said before, if omega is large, uh, capital V might be negative somewhere, so this quadratic form might be indefinite. So uh, mountain pass uh, theorem is no longer applicable. So we are interested in the case that uh, 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 capital B is uh, indefinite. Uh, we will focus on this situation. So for the simplest uh, problem we are interested in, that is this semi-linear setting equation, the equation two. Uh, for this problem, this is the most simplest one. Uh, the, the most interesting situation is the case that V is uh, uh, periodic. In this case, the, the spectrum of the setting operator consists of uh, some uh, disjoint closed intervals. So if zero lies in uh, the gap between two uh, intervals, uh, then uh, the positive space and the negative space of this quadratic form are all infinite dimensional. Uh, therefore, th such problems are called strongly indefinite. Uh, so for this case, uh, the most famous result uh, is due to uh, Klosowski and Suzuki. Uh, they obtained a solution for the semi-linear Schrodinger equation, that is the equation two, assuming that the nonlinearity G uh, is subcritical. Subcritical means that uh, the last limit as t goes to infinity uh, in this line uh, is true. And also we, they assume that the nonlinearity G is superlinear zero. Uh, this is their first assumption. The second assumption is the so-called ambulacity Lyapunovich condition, which says that there is a mu greater than two, so that for every no zero t, this inequality uh, holds. Now, uh, so this this assumption G one or ambulacity Lyapunovich condition means that the nonlinearity uh, satisfies this uh, condition. As t goes to infinity, g t divided by t goes to positive infinity. Therefore, such nonlinearity are called superlinear. So this is a superlinear problem. So the the uh, the, the, the condition G one uh, plays an important role in the study of a superlinear problem. But uh, there are many uh, superlinear function are not satisfying G one. For example, this function, this is a uh, superlinear, but it violates G one because G one implies that uh, this equality uh, is true. When mu is greater than two, obviously our GT here could not verify that, uh, could not satisfy this condition. So this uh, uh, nonlinearity uh, does not satisfy G1. However, G1 is very important because uh, under the assumption G1, we can easily obtain the boundaries of a parallel smell sequence of the functional. Uh, without G1, we don't know whether the parallel smell sequence uh, is bounded. So uh, in the last decade, so there are some uh, mathematicians interested in uh, studying superlinear problem without assuming G1. So this result is due to Yong Qing Li uh, and his collaborator. 
they using they 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 study this case uh that uh, v is periodic and uh, positive therefore they 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 are studying the uh, definite problem using Nihali manifold uh they obtained a grand state solution uh assuming g zero and instead of g one they assume g two here g two says that this function eta is strictly increasing and uh, uh, also they assume this limit this limit is slightly weaker than the superlinear assumption that is gt divided small gt divided by t goes to positive infinity so this is the positive case without assuming g1 but uh, for the strongly indefinite case that is uh uh zero lies in the spectral gap of the setting operator uh this was uh studied by Zuckin and the uh, in 2009 they uh, they uh they obtained a solution uh, assuming the same condition uh, as Lee and his collaborator, except that they allow V to be side changing. So the, the problem is strongly indefinite. Uh, so why they use uh, Pankov manifold? Because they don't, uh, and the Nihali manifold, because uh, uh, because we don't know whether the palace smell sequence uh, are bounded. So the, the standard variational method, the standard uh, critical point theorem, such as mountain pass or linking theorem, uh, could not apply. So this is why they use this uh, Nihali or Pankov manifold method. Uh, but uh, uh, as I said, without G1, our functional cannot satisfy palace smell condition. But uh, in addition to palace smell condition, or in addition to palace smell sequence, uh, we, we can also work with a uh, salami sequence. So a main idea of uh, my work is that uh, although we don't know whether palace smell sequence are bounded, maybe we can uh, obtain the boundedness of a salami sequence uh, because the salami sequence uh, are better than palace smell sequence. Uh, so uh, replacing palace smell sequence by uh, salami sequence uh, appears in many uh, work, uh, many researches. But for indefinite problem, in particular, uh, for strongly indefinite problem, uh, the, uh, uh, it seems no, no such work. Uh, uh, so uh, in 2012, uh, I obtained this result. Uh, so uh, uh, assuming V, uh, the potential V is periodic, zero lies in a spectral, a spectral gap, therefore the problem is strongly indefinite. And also we assume G zero and uh, G2 prime. G2 prime, we compare G2 prime with their G2. We see that their G2 require this function to be strictly increasing. Well, my G2 prime only require this function to be uh, no decreasing. So uh, we obtain the same result. We have a grand state solution. So the proof of this theorem uh, is not uh, depend on uh, Nihali or Pankov manifold as the work of Lee and uh, Suzuki and Vets. Uh, no, uh, we use standard variation method. Uh, we consider this functional. Then uh, uh, solutions of our problem are critical points of this functional. So we want to find the critical point of this functional. So uh, let x plus and x minus be the positive and negative space of this conjoint form in the functional and define the set N and the capital M here. N is a, a sphere uh, under positive space x plus and the N is a half ball uh, where a phi here is an element on x plus therefore m is a m is a half ball uh, in the space spanned by x minus and the phi uh, okay then uh, because uh, under the uh, under the assumption capital g is no negative therefore uh, it is clear that phi is no positive over x minus uh, because this term this uh this integral is a positive, which is the minus sign. It is negative. So uh, this term on the negative space is uh, no positive. So phi is no positive on x minus. So using this, we see that the increment of phi over n will be greater than the supplement of capital of the boundary of capital M, provided rho is small enough and r is large enough. That is to say, the functional. It is easy to see that the functional satisfies the linking geometry. Uh, usually, you, usually with this linking geometry, we have a palace smell sequence. If you can prove that the palace smell sequence is, is bounded, then it will converge weakly to a critical point, uh, which might be the solution you want. However, as we uh, because we do not assume G1, uh, the, 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 
the, the Palace smash sequence might be unbounded. This is the difficulty. But uh, there is a result by uh, Gong Bao Li and uh, Suzuki. Uh, they say that uh, their result in, uh, ensure that there is a salami sequence at the level C, where C is a positive number. Uh, a salami sequence, UN is a sequence uh, satisfying these two conditions. Uh, so because salami sequence is better than Palace smash sequence, I can prove that this salami sequence is bounded. Uh, and uh, its weak limit uh, is uh, the, the critical point we want. Uh, uh, so this, uh, this concluded proof. Of course, I could not uh, present the, the detail of the, the, the verification of the boundaries of UN here. If you are interested, you may uh, consult my paper. And uh, uh, that is the idea. Uh, my, the idea of this work is that uh, palace smell sequence might be unbounded, but the salami sequence might be bounded. Uh, uh, so this is my first result I want to share with you. Uh, so next I will go to uh, uh, the Schrodinger Poisson systems. Uh, so the six system six here is the Schrodinger Poisson system. Uh, this is uh, there is a uh, two unknown function u phi, uh, but uh, uh, Benchy and uh, his collaborator Fortunato uh, they uh, proposed um, uh, reduce uh, reduction method. Uh, so uh, so. They, they define this functional capital phi. Uh, here, this term, uh, phi u, phi u is the solution of the second equation, uh, okay, in the system. Uh, actually, phi u has this uh, expression, okay. So if u is a critical point of phi, then uh, uh, using u to solve the second equation, you obtain phi u, then the pair u, phi u, will be a solution of this system. Therefore, solving this system is equivalent to find the critical point of this functional phi. Uh, so this is the uh, idea uh, initiated by Bench and Fortunato. Uh, how, uh, if V is positive, then there are many, many results. Uh, uh, it is, uh, I, I will not list the results here, but uh, we, we are interested in the case that V is negative, then this quadratic form uh, might be indefinite. Uh, okay. So other people study the case that this quadratic form is positive, but I will study the case that it is indefinite. Uh, so uh, is this similar to the uh, semi-linear case I just uh, show you? Uh, no, uh, because there is a new feature arise in finding critical point of this function. Uh, what's the new feature here? Because there is a term here, this term. So without this term, uh, if this quadratic form is indefinite, then the function might satisfy the linking geometry and we can apply the linking theorem. However, because this term is uh, positive, so phi no longer no positive on the negative space. This is no longer true. This thing is no longer true. Without this, we could not verify that this inequality. So the function of phi, in fact, does not satisfy the linking geometry. Linking geometry means that this inequality uh, holds. Therefore, for this indefinite problem, we could not apply the linking theorem. So this is the new feature for this problem. So fortunately, uh, there is a notion uh, introduced by uh, Jia Chuan Li and uh, Su Jie Li in the 1980s, uh, which is the so-called local linking, uh, which uh, the idea based on the local linking, uh, linking may help us find the critical point of this fee. Uh, so let's uh, have a look on what is local linking. Suppose x is a Banach space uh, which can be decomposed uh, as this sum, and phi is a functional. We said that phi has a local linking at zero if there is some isom such that uh, this inequality hold. Uh, this means that zero is a local maximizer of the functional over the x minus space. And uh, also we also have this. Uh, this means that zero is a strictly local minimizer of the functional. Uh, 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 let's check to the x plus space. If these uh, conditions are satisfied, we say that phi has a local linking at zero. Uh, obviously, when phi has a local linking at zero, zero is a subtle point of the functional, uh, clearly a critical point. Uh, but we are interested in the no zero critical point. Okay, so this is the concept local linking. Uh, you, uh, which local linking, we have this uh, critical point theorem uh, due to Si uh, Xiaoluan uh, and Ami uh, Mao. Uh, uh, their theorem says that if phi has a local linking and uh, satisfies some salami type compactness condition, and uh, phi uh, map a bounding set to bounding set, and uh, for every finite dimensional subspace of uh, 
the x plus space phi is anti uh, cohesive uh, along the uh, uh, anti cohesive on the uh, x minus and the, uh, 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 on the sum of x minus and y. Okay, if this are satisfied, then phi has a no zero locally kick point. Uh, we will use this theorem to solve our problem. Uh, later we will we, later we we we, ob, we observe that uh, local linking can be combined with more theory, uh, which will uh, simplify the many uh, argument. So we uh, we will uh, uh, introduce uh, some uh, basic uh, concept about more theory. Suppose phi is a continuous Near the differentiable function and u is an isolated critical point. Uh, this set phi c is called a level set. Then this homology group, this homology groups uh, is the critical group of phi at the critical point u. Uh, so this is what critical group is. Here is the uh, singular homology group of this topological pair. Uh, by the exceeding property of a singular homology, we know that the critical group at u describe the local behavior of the functional phi near the isolated critical point u, okay? And uh, how about the global property of the functional? The global property uh, is described uh, by uh, the critical group at infinity. Now we assume that phi satisfies palace smell condition or salami condition. And alpha is a um, uh, lower bound of uh, the critical values of phi. Then uh, this homologic group is the uh, critical group of phi at infinity. Here, for different alpha, because all, if the, of the alpha is a lower bound of critical value, when alpha change, uh, there is no critical value between. Uh, so all the different phi alpha, all the different phi alpha are isomorphic, uh, sorry, all the different alpha are homotopically equivalent. Therefore, by the uh, homotopic invariance of homology, uh, we know that the right-hand side does not depend on alpha. Therefore, this definition uh, is well-defined, okay? So this is critical group at u describing local behavior of phi near u. And the critical group at infinity uh, describes the global behavior of the functional, okay? So using critical group, uh, we, we, we can write the uh, uh, most inequality, but we will not need most inequality in this talk but we need this critical point theorem uh, due to Bach and uh, Lee. Uh, so if phi satisfies compactness and uh, the uh, for some index L, uh, the critical group, the L's critical group of phi at zero and uh, at infinity are not identical, then phi has a no zero critical point. Uh, this is a mentor in our, the rest of this talk. But uh, uh, to apply this result, we need to know something about the critical group, for example, at zero. So to to get some information about the critical group at zero, uh, we have this result due to Jia Chuan Liu. Uh, uh, so phi, if phi has a local linking at zero, and uh, the dimension of x minus is finite, say L, then the result is that the L's critical group of phi at zero is no trivial. So this result is very useful in the rest of this talk. Okay, this is the preliminary of um, uh, the rest of this talk. Now we will start our investigation of uh, uh, Sardinga Poisson systems. So this is uh, the Sardinga Poisson system we want to study. Uh, the first result uh, is a joint work of which my student uh, published in 2015. So assume that this V is cohesive and that the nonlinearity G is subcritical. Subcritical means that this limit when T goes to zero, uh, sorry, when t goes to infinity, uh, the li limit is zero because here six is the critical exponent in dimension three, and also we assume that g is uh, superlinear at zero, uh, and uh, we also need this assumption g one, uh, which is slightly uh, sorry, which is somewhat similar to the unbelocity Lobanovich condition but weaker. Okay, and uh, also we assume that the nonlinearity is uh, four superlinear. Then, if we zero is not an eigenvalue of this uh, Sardinga operator, then uh, our system has no trivial solutions. Uh, why no trivial solution? Because it is easy to see that u equal to zero, phi equal to zero is a trivial solution for, for, for this problem. Therefore, we are interested in no trivial solution. Well, this is a set of uh, sufficient condition to ensure the existence of a no trivial solution. Uh, this should be the uh, first result uh, for the indefinite case, because we only assume that V is continuous and cohesive, 
uh, the lower bound of V might be negative. V might be negative somewhere. Uh, therefore, the Schrodinger operator might be uh, indefinite. So this is the first result for indefinite case. Okay. So let's have a look on the proof, the, the basic idea. The first is uh, to introduce a suitable working space. Uh, so uh, we choose this uh, subspace, linear, linear subspace of uh, the subordinate space, uh, equipped, which it is known. Here we tilta, we tilta because v, v is side changing, therefore we need to uh, lift v tilta so that this is positive to make this norm. Then which this norm, x is a Hilbert space, which can be compactly embedded into the big space for p in this range. Uh, this is uh, our standard result. Now we want to find a critical point for this functional. Uh, Okay, so firstly, uh, for any epsilon uh, positive, uh, we have a uh, say epsilon uh, by our by our assumption on the nonlinearity small g. Uh, this is easy. Uh, so using this result, uh, it is immediate that when u goes to zero, the integral of capital G is a lower uh, and higher order perturbation, which is back to the square of the norm of u. And also we know that uh, this term, which is phi u here. Uh, is controlled by the uh, by, by, by the uh, force time power of the norm of u. Therefore, using this estimate, using this estimate, we see that our functional as u goes to zero, our functional is a quadratic form with higher order perturbation. That is, that is phi u behave in this way. So, so, so it is clear that phi has a local linking at zero because this higher order term you might ignore it. Uh, because you, uh, the, the main role were played by the first term. Uh, so the first term, uh, on the positive space, it is positive. On the negative space, it is negative. So, uh, so zero, uh, zero is zero. Therefore, uh, it, it has a local linking. Ah, okay. Uh, so this is the proof of local linking. Now, uh, we can also prove that phi satisfies the compactness. Uh, I'm sorry that I have to omit this, uh, this part here. And also we can prove that phi is anti-cohesive uh, over any over the sum of any finite dimensional space of the positive space and the, the negative space. Uh, okay. In fact, in, in, in our case, in our case, the negative space, negative space uh, is finite dimensional. So 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 this space here uh, are all finite dimensional. So it is e easy to prove its uh, anti-cohesiveness. Okay. So so uh, so the, the, the theorem uh, implies the existence of no trivial solution, uh, critical point of phi, therefore uh, prove, uh, concluding the proof of this result. Okay. Uh, in this result, this uh, compact embedding uh, is important to ensure to ensure the to ensure the uh, the salami condition here. Okay. But uh, we can we can also study the case that the working space uh, could not compactly embed into the big space. Uh, that is uh, our result in 2017. Now we assume that V is bounded. Because V is bounded, uh, the setting, uh, the working space can only be H1 itself. We could not work on a suitable subspace uh, to obtain to, to obtain the compact embedding. Okay? And we assume that this is an S is a no degenerate and the, the negative space uh, is finite dimensional. Okay, this is the assumption on V and the G for the nonlinearity. Uh, the, 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 the assumption is similar to the previous theorem, uh, but uh, uh, eventually we need the functional to satisfy uh, compactness condition. But uh, because the working space could not embed it into the big space compactly, uh, we need some additional assumption on the nonlinearity. So the nonlinearity, we assume that it satisfies this condition G2. G2 is borrowed from the work of Bach and his collaborator. Uh, that is this paper uh, in 2004. Uh, this is our assumption G2. Uh, okay. This G2 means that G decay to zero in some suitable manner. Okay. So under this assumption, our system, our single person system also has a no trivial solution. A typical example for a nonlinearity G satisfying our assumption is this function G. Uh, here AX is, an, uh, is a continuous uh, positive function decaying to zero at infinity. And uh, P is greater than four and uh, less than six. Okay, so this is an example. 
So the proof of this theorem uh, is somewhat similar to the previous theorem, but uh, uh, we need to salvage the compactness case uh, con uh, condition because uh, we do not have compact embedding anymore. And also, uh, we, we the proof is done uh, by using critical group. We, we will not apply this theorem for the proof of the, our result uh, because uh, using critical group will be more convenient. So uh, firstly, uh, we prove the parallelized smell condition. So we choose a um, parallelized smell sequence, UM, because our fee is indefinite. Uh, it's indefinite. We we we, uh, we we write UN as the sum of its projections uh, on the negative space and the positive space uh, of the conjunctive form. Then, uh, because the negative space is finite dimensional, this is important, uh, and we can show that UN is bounded, uh, and that the proof is also omit here. Therefore, up to a subsequence, it converge to weakly to some point U. Then, to obtain the strongly convergence, uh, we define this functional capital N. So we know that by the result of Zhao and Zhao, uh, we know that N is weakly lower semi-continuous, and the derivative of, of N is weakly sequentially continuous. So this lower limit, this lower limit precisely is this. Uh, so it is uh, no negative. Also, using the condition G2, uh, by the argument of Bach, uh, we know that this upper limit uh, is no positive. Combine this fact, UN is a like smell sequence, and uh, this is no negative, and this is no positive. Uh, we can uh, obtain that uh, the norm of UN goes to the norm of U. But, but UN converts to U weakly, therefore actually UN converts to U strongly. So this verifies the palace smell condition. Okay, this is the first step. Then, then as before, we can prove that phi has a local linking at zero. Uh, phi has a local linking at zero, so by the result of Jia Chuan Liu I just mentioned, um, uh, if the dimension of the negative space of the quadratic form x minus is L, then we know that the L's critical globe of phi at zero uh, is no trivial. We can also prove that the critical globe of phi at infinity uh, are trivial for every L. Uh, okay. Uh, for the next result, I will demonstrate how to uh, how to obtain the result in this of this type. Therefore, the result of Bach and Lee provide us a nojello critical point. So this nojello critical point gives rise to a no trivial solutions for our system. Uh, so this concludes the proof. Uh, so in this two theorem, the nonlinearity G uh, are all four superlinear. Uh, GT divided by T to the cube is, goes to positive infinity. Uh, we also have a result G is not for superlinear. This is a joint work which uh, Moscone. So V is superlinear as before, and zero is not an eigenvalue. This is a no degenerate assumption. For the nonlinearity, we assume that it is subcritical superlinear at zero as before, but uh, uh, we assume that G uh, is controlled by this power function. Here, P is greater than two, but less than three. Uh, so because p is less than three, our g could not be superlinear. Uh, could not be four superlinear. Okay. Uh, under this assumption, this system has two nonzero solutions. Uh, here is an example, the, the the power function which put p in this uh, range. Uh, okay. So this is the our result for uh, the case g is not for superlinear. We, we we can also study the case that p is greater than three but uh, not greater than four. In this case, we can, uh, which additional assumption, uh, Zaf type assumption on the potential V, uh, we, we can have a no zero solution. Uh, okay, but I will omit uh, that part. Uh, okay, I, I will not prove this uh, theorem here, but uh, motivated by this theorem, uh, we study the schrodinger kirchhoff uh, problem. That is this problem. This problem is also variational. Uh, the solution can be found as critical point of this functional. Okay, so this is our uh, recent result. Uh, suppose uh, zero. Uh, we we know that under un, under our assumption, the Schrodinger operator uh, has a complete sequence of uh, eigenvalue. So suppose zero lies between two uh, eigenvalue, and uh, v uh, is continuous as before, and uh, outside a big ball, outside a big ball, v behave in this way. So here gamma is greater than one. So V not only is cohesive, uh, it is this assumption is uh, stronger than the cohesiveness of V. Uh, 
unlike the previous result, we need this result. I've explained why we need this result in the next page. So this is the assumption on one way. And uh, for the nonlinearity G, uh, G is superlinear at zero and uh, sub quadratic at infinity. Then this problem has two nonzero solution. Uh, our problem has two nonzero solution. Uh, if G is old, uh, then we have k pairs of nonzero solution where the k is this this eigen the index of this eigenvalue. Okay. So uh, the the uh, in this theorem in the, under the assumption of this theorem we will prove that phi is cohesive uh, as the as the proof of this uh, theorem, which is Moscone, uh, our functional is uh, cohesive. Uh, the cohesiveness of this functional phi seems natural because this term is uh, of power uh, order two, and this is fourth order. And uh, because G is uh, sub quadratic uh, at infinity, capital G will be sub uh, cubic uh, at infinity. Therefore, this is the higher order term. It is positive, so it seems that the uh, phi, uh, the cohesiveness of phi is natural. But uh, actually, this is not obvious because uh, even if the v is uh, positive and the uh, capital G, uh, it, it, uh, close uh, in this way, uh, where p is uh, not greater than four, then uh, in this assumption, this is still the highest order term, but the function is unbounded below. The infinite is negative infinity. So uh, the, uh, the cohesiveness of this functional is not obvious. So to prove this uh, cohesiveness of this functional, uh, uh, we compare, we are, this work is motivated by this work. In this work, uh, we are studying this functional. For this functional, uh, this inequality of Lewis is very important. So we need to find a similar inequality for our uh, functional corresponding to this Schrodinger Poisson system, uh, okay? Uh, but uh, for Schrodinger Poisson system, we do not have this term, so we need to uh, solve this problem. The first step is uh, choose the working space as before, uh, lifting V, make it uh, positive so that we can define the norm. Then this space, uh, uh, by our assumption of V and using whole inequality, we have this. Now, because we our gamma is greater than one, and we are working in three-dimensional space, so this integral converge. Therefore we obtain this inequality. This inequality will provide us a continuous embedding. Uh, we provide us a continuous embedding from our working space X into the big space L3 over two, okay? Using this continuous embedding, applying the gaglioli Nilberg inequality, we have this inequality. And then using the Young inequality, and now, uh, using the continuous embedding we just established, we eventually obtain this inequality. So this final inequality will play the same role as the Lewis inequality for the study of Schrodinger Poisson systems. Ah, okay. So this is the our result on Schrodinger Kirchhoff problem. And uh, finally, I will talk about uh, our result on uh, quadrilinear Schrodinger equation. Ah, that is this problem. Uh, this problem. Uh, this equation is the Euler Lagrange equation for this functional. However, this functional could not be defined on the whole space H1. Because for some u in H1, the integral of this term might be in depth infinite. So for such u, j is not defined there. So j can be defined on a, a proper subset of this space. There is no critical point theorem to deal with such functional, not defined on the whole space but defined on a proper subset of the space. So this is the main difficulty for the study of this uh, quadrilinear problem. But uh, uh, in 2003, Jia Chuan Liu, uh, Zi Qiang Wang and uh, uh, their student uh, introduced a nonlinear transformation. Uh, their nonlinear transformation later was improved by these two French mathematicians in 2004. So using this nonlinear transformation, we can consider this uh, uh, this uh, quadrilinear problem is converted to a semilinear problem uh, whose solutions are critical point of this functional capital phi. So if V is a critical point of phi, then applying the nonlinear transformation F to V, we obtain a function U. This view, this U will be solutions of our uh, quadrilinear problem, okay? So since they are, since they, uh, since they introduced this nonlinear transformation, this method 
has been applied numerous of time by uh, many many mathematicians and uh, many many uh, interesting results on this collinear Schrodinger equation appears in the literature. But uh, all the results require that the zero function to be a local minimizer of this functional capital phi. Every paper requires v to be local minimizer. For example, if capital V is positive, if the potential V is positive, then the zero function will be a local minimizer of this functional. Uh, so as before, uh, we are interested in the case that if V is side changing, so that uh, this uh, so that zero function is not local minimizer anymore. Uh, just uh, the the reason for studying this problem is the same as our previous result on Schrodinger Poisson system. Uh, of course, also including the semi-linear Schrodinger equation. Okay, and uh, uh, our Schrodinger Kirchhoff problem I, uh, we just uh, talk about. So, so how to deal with this case? Uh, we we may think uh, we 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 may try to apply the local linking as our study of Schrodinger Poisson system and the Schrodinger Kirchhoff problem. But uh, we notice that the principal part of this functional is not a quadratic form. Because f is no linear here, so this is not a quadratic form of v. So without without this quadratic form, we don't know how to decompose the space. No matter you want to apply a linking theorem or uh, local linking, you need to decompose the space into the sum, the leg sum of two uh, subspace. But uh, if you do not have a quadratic form, how to decompose the space is not clear. So this is the main difficulty of the this problem, okay? Of course, we can decompose the space using this quadratic form, but uh, this quadratic form does not appear in our functional capital phi. Uh, so uh, we don't know the such decomposition, we don't know the relation uh, of such a decomposition, which the investigation of our phi, okay? So this is the difficulty. Also, uh, to study the boundaries of a symptotically critical sequence, uh, Halesa Smear sequence, Salami sequence, uh, we, usually we need to decompose the space, uh, projecting the, uh, where we, uh, 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 sorry, decompose the sequence uh, as the sum of their projection uh, at uh, on negative space and a positive space, uh, just like our proof, just like the proof of our result about setting a uh, Poisson system. Okay, we 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 have this decomposition. We just mentioned this. Okay, so for our quadrilinear problem, this decomposition seems useless because the nonlinear transformation here uh, will destroy this decomposition. Okay, we don't know where uh, we don't know what what uh, what is the result to apply the F to this sum. Okay, so this is also difficult. Uh, fortunately, uh, which is slightly stronger condition, we we can obtain the, uh, some existent result. Uh, this is our result in 2018. As before, V is cohesive, and for the nonlinearity G, uh, which uh, we assume that it is superlinear at zero and uh, subcritical. This is a subcritical, but uh, for sub for this problem, subcritical sub means that p is uh, less than twice of the usual critical exponent. Okay, uh, this is due to the nonlinear transformation, due to the behavior of the nonlinear transformation f at infinity, and also we assume this uh, g one condition, which is essentially uh, amplicity Lovich type uh, condition. Then if zero is not an eigenvalue we will have a no trivial solution for our this quadrilinear problem. Okay, so this is the first result for indefinite uh, quadrilinear Schrodinger equation in the literature. So to prove this result, uh, firstly, we uh, we set up the functional framework, uh, uh, define this uh, working space as before. And as before, it can be compactly embedded into the big space for Q in this range. So we want to find a critical point for this functional. 
Okay. Uh, firstly, we can uh, ensure that this functional satisfies the salami compactness condition. Uh, using our uh, condition G1, G1 is the ambulosity Lyapunovich type uh, assumption. So, uh, so we, using G1, we can prove that uh, the salami sequence uh, are bounded. Okay. Salami sequence are bounded, and then using the compact embedding, and also using some argument from the work of Wu. Wu Xian, ah, Wu Xian, uh, Professor Wu Xian, uh, uh, the work of Wu studied the uh, uh, definite case. Uh, the, the, in, the, in, the, in the work of Wu, uh, the potential of V is positive, but now we study the uh, sign changing case. Uh, okay, so this is different uh, with the work of Professor Wu. Uh, this is the first step. Uh, our fee uh, satisfies compactness condition. Then uh, we investigate the behavior of fee at infinity. So uh, using the property of the nonlinear transformation and uh, using our assumption, we can prove that if A is large enough, then when we uh, in this uh, uh, when we uh, is chosen from this uh, level set, that is phi uh, not greater than negative A, then this derivative is uh, negative, strictly negative. Uh, and also for for every w uh, on the unit sphere uh, that is along any direction w uh, phi uh, is unbounded below as s goes to positive infinity. Therefore, uh, there is a unique s w such that this equal exactly negative a. Uh, the arriving time uh, uh, start from the unit sphere. Go uh, you you go along the line. Uh, you will decay to negative infinity. Therefore, you will touch minus a. But uh, the arriving time is unique, uh, denoted by S W. Okay, and uh, using this uh, negativeness of the derivative, uh, the derivative at the arriving time is also negative. Therefore, we can apply the implicit function theorem uh, to the equation phi S W equal negative a. We see that. At the arriving time, S W depend continuously on W. So this function is continuous. So having this continuous function uh, by standard argument, uh, initially due to uh, Zi Qiang Wang, uh, initially due to Zi Qiang Wang in his famous work in 1991, uh, we can construct a deformation from the complement of the unit ball to the level set. Therefore, by the definition of critical globe at infinity, uh, this Homology, uh, because uh, this is the strong deformation from this to this, means that these two sets uh, are homotopically equivalent. Therefore, by the homotopically invariance of homology, uh, we know that these two homology groups uh, uh, are isomorphic. But uh, x is infinite dimensional. Therefore, we know that uh, all for all index i, this homology is trivial. So we have uh, completed our investigation of the critical globe at infinity, or the glo uh, the global uh, behavior of phi uh, is trivial. Okay. The last step for our proof is to study the behavior of phi near zero. Uh, we we we, uh, we hope to have a local linking, but uh, our function is of this form. Of this form, there is no a uh, quadratic form to work with. How to decompose the space and verify the local linking? Uh, this is the mo uh, most important uh, uh, element of this study. So, uh, fortunately, although our functional is only say one because small g is only continuous, so this function is only say one. The principal part, the principal part that is this this part, this part is say two. This part we denote by capital Q. Capital Q is C2, and uh, uh, using the property of the nonlinear transformation, we can compute the derivative of Q at a zero function. The first order derivative, the second order derivative is given by this bilinear form. Okay, so having computing the, uh, the, the, the derivatives, we can apply the Taylor expansion. As V goes to zero, our Q V will be the zero order term plus the first order term and the second order term and the higher order perturbation. Uh, so this is precisely the quadratic form, uh, which is higher order perturbation. Now our function of capital Phi is QV uh, uh, subtract by this uh, integral of capital G. Uh, then uh, the integral of capital G 
is also higher order perturbation. Uh, in conclusion, as V goes to zero, our functional capital V behave like uh, like this uh, no degenerate uh, 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 quadratic form, uh, adding this uh, higher order perturbation. So it is now clear that phi has a local linking, which leads back to the decomposition. Here x negative and, and x plus are the uh, negative and the positive space of this quadratic form. So as before, we know that the L's critical uh, group of phi at zero is not trivial, where L is the dimension of the negative space. Therefore, the, the critical group of phi at zero and the infinity uh, are not identical. So since the functional satisfies the, palace, uh, the salami condition, uh, we can obtain a no zero critical point, which will give us a no zero solution for our cosilinear, our for our indefinite cosilinear Schrodinger equation. Okay, so this concludes the proof. Uh, the final remark, uh, uh, in, in, in 2019, we study a related problem. Uh, this is a first order problem. So this problem, since, uh, this equation seems uh, much more complicated than the uh, quadrilinear setting equation we just discussed. Because in addition to every term, there is a biharmonic term here. Okay, so this equation seems more complicated. But uh, actually, the study of this first order equation is easier than the previous uh, second order quadrilinear Schrodinger equation because solution of this equation are critical point of this functional phi, uh, defining um, H2. But uh, unlike, unlike the case of quadrilinear equation, uh, for quadrilinear equation, the natural functional could not define one whole one the whole space. It is only defined on a proper subset of the space. Now for our first order equation, since we are working on H2, since we are working on H2, and H2 is more regular than H1, so we don't need to make no linear transformation. Uh, this function, no, capital V, is well defined on the whole space H2. Of course, this is this is true only for dimension uh, not greater than six, okay? So since we don't need to make no linear transformation, we can get better results, okay? So for example, we can delve into the case that uh, the, uh, the, no the, 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 the potential is bounded so that the working space is precisely H2. Uh, so we do not have compact embedding. So why we can get a better result? Because without involving the no linear transformation, the principal part of the functional is a quadratic form. So it is obvious how to decompose the space to verify the uh, linking or local linking we need for treating indefinite problem. Okay, so this is the advantage uh, to have this uh, higher order term. Okay, and the, uh, and the, uh, uh, okay, this I will omit. So this is what I want to report uh, 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 about our result of in this direction. Uh, so my concluding remark is that uh, in all these results, uh, except except the result the result about the semilinear problem, except the the result for semilinear problem at the I, I talk about at the very beginning. Uh, in other result, uh, all our result required the functional to satisfy uh palace smell condition or salami condition. Uh, so why 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 we need so strong uh uh insurance for 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 the study of the functional because uh currently for for if the functional only has local linking all critical point theory all critical point theory and the theory uh require the functional to satisfy the global compactness uh, unlike the uh, as i said before for the for the critical point theory we have a minimax and the most theory uh, so uh, minimax in, in multiple paths or linking, uh, if you do not have a global compactness, you still has a palace smell sequence. You might, uh, you might investigate its uh, boundaries and the conversion, whether it is convergence, okay? So even if you do not have global uh, compactness, you have a asymptotically critical sequence, such as palace smell sequence or salami sequence. But uh, for result about for result involving local linking, if you have global compactness as our result, 
you will have a critical point. But if you do not have a global compactness, of course you do not have critical point. And you you also you you also do not could not have a asymptotically critical sequence. So this is a uh, very different from uh, the result uh, using a uh, minimax argument such as mountain pass and uh, linking. Uh, so this is uh, the reason why we need our functional to satisfy uh, global compactness. Okay. So this is what I want to uh, talk. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Guillaume. Thank you. Any questions? I would like to ask a question. Yes. Thanks, Professor Liu, for this very nice talk, an overview of all of the method and uh, applied to many different problems. Thank you. It was Thank very you. interesting. My question is in the very, like the, the frame 23rd, you so. define a quadratic operator in the in this type of uh, calling Jean Jean problems with the twenty third, yeah, in the uh, very end, very end, yes, yeah, here, here, yeah. Why in this quadratic form you don't have the term with f, f of v? Uh, because before, uh. Let me show you. Um, if you go, so so here, this is here, yeah. yeah yes this is the this is the capital Q. Uh, uh, -huh. uh you 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 said why we do not have F here? Yeah yes yes uh, why this, you do not uh, have F? This is uh you see uh the 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 the, the nonlinear transformation F has this property F zero is zero, and the the derivative of F at zero is one. So this is the nice property of F. Therefore, when wow. we when we take the derivative and evaluate at zero, F disappear. <laughs> so, uh, ah, okay. so yeah, nice, so, nice. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is a so a very, you go back to the norm and then you can work with the norm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the because you the are lucky fact, lucky fact around fact with, 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 around so, uh, zero. Yeah, yeah, yes. Ah, very lucky. <laughs> Nice. And my other question is, you, at least in most of your problems, you have v of x going to plus infinity. So it's like a, a coercive potential. Yeah, coercive. And this gives you a, a finite negative spectrum, right? Yeah, yes. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, can I uh, uh, change a slide uh, so that I don't need to step by step? I can uh, display the whole page immediately. I will change my slide, okay? I will stop the selling this. Uh, this. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, so, in your problems, you always yeah, yeah, have yeah, a yeah. finite dimensional uh, negative spectrum. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Right? Uh, uh, why we need. Uh, uh, can you see the slide? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, uh. So to save time, I will not change. So uh, because uh, why we need a uh, why uh, why we can only delve into finite dimensional because uh the uh for example if we use the critical group if we use the critical group you know the homology uh the two is here is the singular homology singular homology could not uh detect uh infinite dimensional sphere okay the uh -huh. fin finite dimensional sphere Homo is uh, homologically no trivial, but the infinite dimensional uh, sphere uh, from the homological point of view is trivial, topologically trivial. So this, uh, so using this type of critical group, we can only uh, delve into finite dimensional. We, we can only detect finite a finite dimension. dimension. Yeah, the, this is the 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 key, uh, the essential reason why we can only delve into a finite dimensional negative space. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Very Thank nice. Thank you. Results. Mm -hmm. Very good. Any more questions? No questions? Now we're going to turn on. 
Thank you very uh, much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your attention. Thank you. So I will stop. I, I will stop selling the, the screen. Uh, stop. How to stop?